four-man crews be able to operate all the electronics on board, and they were uh, just intelligence gathering, mostly electronic intelligence gathering aircraft. The Air Force also flew some Sky Raiders later during the Vietnam War for air control. And still on the right side is another British aircraft. This is the Avro Shackleton. It's a land-based, long-range patrol aircraft. Got that radar underneath the belly. Sometimes they call this a flying spark plug because that antenna up on top sort of looks like the, uh, you know, the receptacle or the, the tip of a uh, spark plug on a or car or any sort of engine, really. And back to the left side. Pointed right at us here is a Boeing EC-47 Stratojet. It's the first pure jet long-range bomber the Strategic Air Command operated. I think it has six engines on it. A big bomb bay on the belly between the main landing gear there. This one is an EB-47, and the E means electronics countermeasures aircraft, so they took the bomb bay and filled it with different electronics rather than use it as a bomber. But the B-47s generally were a long-range aircraft. They did have in-flight refueling capability, so they could extend their range quite a bit. And the little outrigger wheels that you see underneath the engines out there are not landing gear, really. They're just there to keep you from dragging an outboard engine or a wingtip when you're taxiing around on a run that you go a little too fast into the corner and the airplane will rock over a little bit. You don't want to drag something, so that little uh, outward wheel includes that. Tweets. And still on the left, the black and white airplane is the Cessna T-37. It's a primary jet trainer that the type of the Air Force flew for several years. On the right is another Lockheed Constellation. This happens to be the uh, EC-121 was the military designation. It's got that huge radar underneath the belly and also one up on top. And they were long-range patrol-type aircraft. And this airplane here on the left is a real treat. I think there are only two of these remaining now. We have one. The Air Force has one. The Air Museum. This is the Condor uh, B-36. Excuse me. Lost, lost the number. Half of all time. This is a late 1940s era strategic bomber, did not have in-flight refueling capability, but regardless, the airplane stayed in the air for about 18 hours just on a fuel to carry. Wow. I think it has 10 engines on it. Uh, six reciprocating engines put in a pusher configuration and four jets, two hanging under each wing. When we acquired the rights to this airplane, it probably been, oh gosh, eight or 10 years ago now, it was actually down in Fort Worth, Texas, I believe is where it is, somewhere in Texas anyway. Of course, it hadn't flown in many years and it hasn't flown since then. But our people went down and dismantled the entire airplane, put it onto 18 flatbed trucks and brought it out here. They put it all back together so we have it here. And it's just really neat to be able to come by and just see that airplane every week. Another little British aircraft here on the left is the Fulham Rat. It's a two-seat trainer and instructor students have four and a half inside of it. And then the camouflage aircraft on the left is a built by Dassault Brigier, uh, it's a French-German consortium. It's the Alpha Jet. The French used it strictly as a trainer. The Germans also use it as a ground attack strike tank airplane. And a couple of old engines. The first one there's a reciprocating engine, the other one's a turbojet engine sitting on the left, just to give an idea what they look like. 